the people of God just now ought to say amen. Amen. I believe it was the psalmist in the long ago that said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Yes, sir. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Yes, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His yes. mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Somebody ought to say amen right now. Somebody ought to say amen. If God's been good to you, you got a reason to shout right now. Woke you up this morning to discover that the four corners of your room was not the four corners of your grave. You ought to be shouting right now. Let you walk out the house and know who you were and know how to get here. You got another reason to shout all over again. Bless you to have a roof over your head, some clothes on your back, and some food on your table. Just ought to be shouting again. Amen, somebody. And then every now and again, you get a word that messes with your spirit. The doctor found a spot and don't know what to do. And maybe somebody done decided, I've been here long enough. Their stuff is packed and they're ready to go. But God kept them there. And if it wasn't for what the Lord does in terms of your kids, whoo, you'd be ready to catch a case right now. Somebody ought to say amen all up in here. We are thankful for the privilege and for the opportunity to be in this place on another Lord's Day. I'm always mindful of John as he records in the fourth chapter of the book of John at about verse number 23 and 24 where the Bible says God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can I help you with the text just a little bit? If I remember properly, the term spirit as it's used in John 4 uh, speaks to and has the anchor in terms of its definition about right attitude. Oh, you missed your shout. You missed your shout. I, I, I've had to tell Sister Sims here and I have an agreement. Listen, the last thing we're going to do before we go to worship service is get into it. Bro, she burnt the biscuits. Let that stuff go. Amen, somebody. Sister, if he ain't doing everything he need to be doing, forget about that right now because you come up in here and then hold on to all of that. You ain't going to be able to get your praise on. Amen, somebody. You're going to have the wrong attitude. You're going to be all messed up about everything wrong. Y'all just don't know, y'all just don't know, y'all. Y'all just don't, I, I, I could just shout all by myself, amen, somebody. Yeah, yeah, listen, listen, let me, let me explain some things. I need to do this, brother, coffee. I, I feel so out of place. I walked in here, all the fellas got on their suit, and here I come in here with, look, look at me, look at me. Listen, listen, I, 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 got the, I got the word that this was casual, you know, I was becoming casual. And, and I, and I come in here casual. You, you know the preacher ain't in his uniform right now. I ain't, I ain't in my uniform. I feel some kind of way. Hey, amen, somebody. And, and then I messed around, and y'all just don't know how bad I wanted to come. I, I, I was struggling last week, and I messed around, and every now and again I had some gout. I had some gout. Because I, I know some of y'all already looked at that and said, that nigga done come in here with his slippers on. I, I know you know already, you know already caught that. You know already caught that. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, listen, that gout get to hurting you just bad enough. You, you, you lucky to get a shoe on, amen, somebody. And, 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 and bro, coffee, bro, coffee, let me tell you, let me tell you. I just got to tell y'all, because I want y'all to know why I'm looking the way I'm looking right now. I messed around and got the toe together, and it's feeling pretty good. But I messed around last week, and I, I got the shouting, and I stumped, and messed around and messed up this knee. So now I'm hobbling on the knee, and I'm like, Lord Jesus, if it ain't one thing, it's another, amen, somebody. And so I said, man, I better come on here and act right right now, so... Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Let, and let me, let me, let me, let me, I hope y'all, I hope y'all let me, let me get comfortable. And I want to, I want to do some things and I pray God in terms of what we intend to do, uh, intend to do that it will be beneficial to all that will be present. A uh, couple of things that I need to explain. Uh, one, um, I am thankful for Renee and I and our being able to arrive here safely. Um, and, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, in a multiplicity of ways, really, if the truth be told. I'm thankful because, one, uh, my wife is dealing with some things health-wise, and, and we've got a battle on our hands, and, and I, 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 she's not going through that by herself. But, but, but I, I, y'all got to see this. I, I just need to do this. Uh, listen, I got a call some months ago in preparation for, uh, I didn't know it at the time, but for the lectureship, another lectureship 
and, and, and somebody called and, and they were saying, well, Brother Sims, how's everything going? And I was telling them, well, you know, I got, and my wife is doing, and this is, and, and my, I just lost my dad and I funeralized him. And, and, and Brother said, I, I didn't know all that was going on with you. He said, well, I'll be praying for you. And then he hung up the phone. And, and my wife said, you know, I think he was calling for something else. Uh, and she felt some kind of way because she said, you know, I, I think you might not be able to go because of what's going on with me. And I said, babe, that's not it. I, I don't need to go really right now. I need to be at home with my, y'all see, see, y'all going to, y'all, y'all going to treat me. Y'all going to treat me. Y'all going to treat me. But, but, but she said, she said, I feel some kind of way because you couldn't go because of me. I said, no, babe, that's not it. I, I'm where I need to be right now. Amen. Somebody. I, I'm with my wife. That's where I need to be. And, 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 and y'all messed around and let me come. And that girl came with me. You can't tell me nothing right now. Amen. Somebody. Yeah, yeah. You ain't got to say amen the first. I'll preach this all by myself. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm going to tell you, I'm 55, man. There's going to come a time in your life where little things going to mean much. Little things. The idea that I roll over and, and, and bump her head against my head, amen, somebody. Little things mean a whole lot. Amen. She's teasingly said to me on some occasions, you know, you'll see her, you might see her today and she's bald. You might see her next week and it's halfway down her back. Amen, somebody. Little things mean a lot. Somebody ought to say amen. Come on, sister Weavalicious. You know what I'm saying right now. Don't, don't act like you don't understand where I'm at right now. Amen, somebody. Oh, Lord, let me be good. Let me. Look, no, no, no. Look, look, come on, come on, come on. I, I better come back and read the text. I'm getting myself in trouble. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Let me do that. And, and, and I, I want to introduce you uh, to that girl I love, and I, I want to ask her if, if she's able and her health is all right right now, feeling strong enough, uh, I need her to stand up so y'all can make, a, make no mistake who I brought with me. Amen. <laughs> Sister so, so Coffee, I'm telling you, she messed around, and, and, and we was at the third Sunday fellowship, and she had this stuff down her back. And her sister walked up to me and said, Brother Sims, she said, how is Sister Sims doing? I said, I said, sis, she's sitting right there. And she said, oh, oh, Sister Sims. And then she smiled and, and you know them sisters got to talking and said, yeah, because if that wasn't Sister Sims, we would have to beat Brother Sims down. <laughs> and y'all call yourselves Christians, amen. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Listen, 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 that girl is the Laquita to my Leroy, amen, somebody. Uh, she is just like American Express. I do not leave home without her. And I'm glad to have her with me. Uh, we have been married some 31 plus years now. Uh, we have five children and what are we up to? 11 grandbabies, I think, uh, right now. And so this uh, subject matter and what we'll do this week is very important to me and to us. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, I'm going to start up here, but I'm coming down there with y'all. I, 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 the first congregation I worked with was a very small rural situation, and, and, and I just like to be close to people Amen. right now. Uh, but let me share this text with you. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And, I, and I'm reading for the for emphasis <laughs> sake. I want to look at verse number 1 through 9, and then I'm going to drop down to verse number 20 through verse number 25. And it's really the basis for the things that we'll share with you on this morning. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules. And excuse me, I need to tell you, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I'm doing so because of the simplistic nature, the simpleness of the, of the text, of the verbiage. It's easy to understand. Uh, this is the commandment, the statutes and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it. That you may fear the Lord your God you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, 
and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Amen. Dropping down to verse number 20 from the English Standard Version, Deuteronomy chapter 6. When your son asks you in time to come, uh -huh. what is the meaning of the testimonies and statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has Amen. commanded us. Amen. One more place I want to share with you comes from Paul's writing to his young charge, Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 14 and verse number 15. Paul says, but as for you, Continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, yeah. knowing from whom you learned it, and from your childhood, you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I am thankful and appreciative for the opportunity to speak to you this morning from the subject matter, support and encouragement for family. Yeah. Support and encouragement for family. Amen. Allow me to settle in a little bit by doing this. We are thankful to God for granting my wife and I safe passage into Jacksonville on last evening. Thankful I am also for the opportunity to find myself at the invitation of Brother Coffey in a position to encourage families as I'm blessed to be able to brag on Jesus this week. Oh, yeah. It's my fervent prayer that God will have his way with me such that our effort is not in vain. Yeah. I want to express to you in very personable fashion that I've oftentimes said, Brother Coffey, that when you have the opportunity to speak where another man speaks, it reminds me of situations and or circumstances where you have been entrusted with a man's wife, his significant other, or somebody that's important to him, y'all not feeling it. In other words, what I want you to see and understand is you don't entrust your spouse, your wife, your sweet thing to just anybody. Y'all ain't feeling that, y'all ain't feeling that. Listen, y'all, you know I'm telling the truth right now. When, 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 when you dealing with a spouse, when you got somebody that you care about, you don't just let everybody have access to what's important to you. So I'm thankful to have the opportunity right now to stand where Brother Coffey stands, to stand where other men preach behind the sacred desk. Thank you, and I greatly appreciate the same. But I also want to say to you, as we have the opportunity to set the groundwork for the things that will be shared during this dissertation, I don't want y'all to treat me like I heard they treated a young preacher when he first went to a congregation. They tell me that the young preacher found himself brought coffee in the midst of dealing with some fellas that were more senior, much more senior, and they were kind of critical of the young man. Yeah. And, and so they decided, well, what we gonna do, we gonna take the young boy fishing and we gonna teach him some stuff. We, we need to get him out on the water by himself so we'll be able to talk with him and help him to come to understand some things because he just ain't where he needs to be right now. And so they got their stuff together and they all got on the boat, two older fellas and the young preacher got in the boat with them and they sailed way out in the middle of the lake. Well, and as they got out there and began to talk to the young man, he was being very patient and he was taking the critical conversation that he was receiving. But somebody said, oh man, we left our tackle box back on the bank. The young man got up Step out the boat, into the water, walk across the water, 
grab the tackle box, turn back, walk back across the water, step back over into the boat, and set the tackle box down. And the two senior fellas looked at each other and said, look at that, boy can't even swim. <laughs> Sometimes, church, you, it's just hard to please some folk, amen, somebody. There are some things that I've learned in the brevity of my years. Sometimes you just gonna have to go ahead and do what God blesses you to do and let God do the rest. Is that all right? So let me say some things to you that I want you to get in terms of the basis for the things that we'll share with you on this morning. First of all, I want you to be mindful by way of introduction that it is the intent of this effort to take all who will voluntarily come along on a journey that is intended for the support and encouragement of family. This will be done through consideration of texts that will allow the reader to draw conclusions that are consistent with the believed edification of texts. Launching from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, as I've read into your hearing, we will hear God's people get a word of exhortation from Moses that they hear God and be obedient to his directive. Being mindful of Paul's statement that things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, Romans chapter 15 and verse number 4, sets the tone that we learn from the Israelites and Moses' interaction with them in such a way that we too can teach people to hear and obey God. Support and encouragement is a tag team seen frequently in text. Further consideration will be sought after through the apostle Paul as he recalls the rearing of his young charge, Timothy. About three or four things that I'm concerned about in the time that we'll have together. One, I want you to give consideration to the idea from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9, children, God's word, and parents. Make note, children, God's word, and parents. Then secondly, I want you to be able to see the second subtopic of this dissertation, and that is the idea of teaching and answering is vital. Teaching and answering is vital. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 20 through verse number 25. Finally, continuing what we have learned and or been taught. And we'll get that from the Apostle Paul as he talks to his young charge, Timothy. Yeah. But first of all, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And let's begin to unfold this dissertation from the thought and the subtopic of the matter, the idea of children, God's word, and parents. Can I, can I talk to some folk right now? Yes. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to be where I am right now at this point in time in my life to have been married to my wife the years we have to have the five children and the grandbabies we've come to realize but one thing I've come to understand also is the importance of our children those that are part of our family I'm not dismissing or dissing your family I'm just talking about those that are important to me right now am I, you feeling me right now you've got some folk more than likely in your house that are important to you as well whether it be your children whether it be your grandchildren can I can you come close can you come close I need you to hear this I need you to receive me in the spirit and Intended. I need you to understand that I sometimes want for them what they really don't want for themselves. Oh, you missed a shot. They're not feeling me over there. Let me, let me check. Let me check. Let me check on this side. I, I, I've come to believe that I sometimes want for them what they really don't want for themselves. You see, I'm serious about my salvation because I know just like the Hebrew writer said in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, it's a point on a man who wants to die and after death comes the judgment. Touch your neighbor and tell him we got to leave here. Touch your neighbor one more time and tell him we got to leave here. Yeah, Listen, and, and James says in James 4, what is your life? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't be funny. Y'all acting funny. Yes, sir. I don't know about nobody. I didn't come to be cute. Amen. Yes, I'm going to help you with something. You ever notice how when you have your candle burning? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Oh, y'all ain't going to treat me like this. Oh, It's about verse number 13 to about verse number 15. Yes, sir. And really, he's dealing with some things in terms of life. Yeah. And one of the things, remember, he says about that situation is he says, your life is like a vapor. Yeah. You ever notice when you have the opportunity and you've lit the candle, but you've grown weary, perhaps it's time to lay down, you, you need to extinguish it so you can go ahead and get your rest. Yeah. An interesting ha thing happens when you extinguish the flame. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's an illustration of one's life. Yeah. Because when you extinguish the flame from the place of which the wick is, mm -hmm. you'll first see the 
thickness of the veil. Yeah. Oh, come on in here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, that, that reminds me when we were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks at me and looks at my foot 
and grab my Come back to the text. Verse number four and five. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one. Yeah. Moses is conveying the principle to the people, and he wants them to understand, and he wants the parents in particular to have value and appreciation for God's directive, God's mandate. And he wants them not only to have appreciation for God's word, but he wants them to be in a place and a position that they'll share it with their children. Amen. And then their children will share it with their children. Amen. Yeah. Can I ask you without meddling right now? How many of y'all are concerned about your kids? How, how many of y'all are not only concerned about your kids, but you're concerned about your grandbabies? And see, see this, 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 what, this is what gets me as a, as a grandfather right now. This, this is what gets me as a grandfather. As a grandfather right now, see, I'm depending on my kids to do with my grandkids because if my grandkids don't get it now, when they get to be older, they won't want it. Y'all not feeling that right there? It's not an indictment to my young folk. I'm just asking you, if you got some kids, make sure you're bringing your kids up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Make sure when the doors open to the church house that you got them here. Don't let them have a choice right now. They'll get old enough to have a choice. But while you can bring them right now, bring them on in with you. I'd rather have them in here with us than out there getting shot up and killed. I'd rather have them in here with us than having to run from folk. I'd rather have them in here with us than you have to worry about. I remember my wife and I lived in a little house. I was working second shift custodian, and I was thankful for it because we had five babies to feed. I remember coming home, opening up that back door, deactivating the alarm. I would set the alarm for stay, throw that bolt on the door, and the next thing I'd do is go upstairs and see where all them five babies were. I would come downstairs and Sister Sims beat and left me a plate or fixed me a little something to eat. Come on now. And I remember laying in the bed and saying to myself then, it'll never be as good as this again. Come on. Yes. 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 Come on, Mom and Daddy. You understand what I'm saying. That, that time, that time when you know where your kids are. Amen, somebody. And, and, and they up there and you feel that they're nice and safe. Now, I felt like I was some kind of contributing factor to the idea of their safety, but it was only after I got older where they were in places and doing things that I didn't know where they were or what they yeah. were doing, yeah. that I really had an appreciation for the idea that the omnipresent God we serve. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. You wait, 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 wait. You missed that. Yeah. Omnipresent God we The God we serve is omnipresent. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying omnipresent speaks to the idea that he's everywhere at the same time regardless yeah. of time. Yeah. <laughs> You missed the shot right now because if you get that, you would understand. Baby girl, you praying, God, I got some stuff coming up. Listen, God is not restricted by time. God can go ahead of your stuff that you got to deal with, fix what you're getting ready to go through. When you get there, he done worked it out and moved on to the next thing you got to it up because God is not restricted. What's going to happen? not sharing a word 
you're not bringing them up. You're not helping them to have an appreciation. Yeah. All of God's benefits. Yeah. All that the Lord continues to do. Listen. I want you to see a kindred spirit of sorts in terms of something Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 5. I'm trying to help you to see the value of the word and the intentional things that God does with us. It has value. One of the things that this text conveys is the idea that the Lord is taking care of and providing and God has done some things and you can see that in the text when I come back. Yeah, yeah, but I want yeah. you to see it in terms of how Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter 5 at verse number 8, Paul says, but if anyone does not provide for his own relatives and especially for members of his household, yeah. he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. I believe the King James says an infidel. infidel. He is worse than that particular individual. Listen, you got responsibilities in terms of your family, in terms of your folk, amen, somebody. There's a real responsibility that we have, and one of the things that Moses is trying to do is convey that to the people that they then might convey it to their children. God's priority taught must be seen in adult lives. Mama, 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 mama. Um, my wife, my wife worked a few years for child development. Your kids are paying more attention than you think. Oh, y'all don't believe that? Can I share another story? Lady comes over to the house having dinner. Little kid walks out of the bedroom, walks up to the lady. kept walking around the lady and she was trying to ignore her. <laughs> she kept walking and looking, walking and looking, walking and looking. Finally, she just couldn't take it no more. She said, girl, what's wrong with you? Why you keep looking at me like that? She said, well, I'm trying to find that other face my mama said you got. <laughs> You got to be careful what you do around your kids. Your kids will bust you every time, amen, somebody. I tell you, trying to get them some good word in them, trying to help them and trying to help them to grow up and do that which is right and behave in appropriate fashion. You mess around and set the wrong tone and they're gonna bust you every time, amen, somebody. Kids don't know what they're doing. They ain't learned to lie like you told them to, amen, somebody. They innocent. Oh, oh Lord, did I say that? Did I? I that wasn't supposed to come out. I was kind of thinking it, but that wasn't really supposed to come out like that. Eh? Amen, amen, somebody. I'm just trying to help you to see some things, so be careful. So, so do some things in terms of the training, in terms of what we are supposed to get for them from God's word. God's priority taught must be seen in adult lives. Y'all remember Matthew chapter 6? Y'all remember verse number 33? Remember the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, last time I checked, if I could just help you a little bit with the text, verse number 33, when it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Righteousness speaks to God's way of doing things. Amen. Guess what? Because God's way is always the right way. Right. Woo that was good right there. Touch your neighbor and tell them God's way is always the right way. Now, listen, listen. How important does God want you to understand in terms of him being priority in your life? Go back to verse 33 and look before that. The matter should be discussed if memory serves me properly. Food, clothing. Mm, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. He says in the text, don't be anxious. Anxious means don't worry. Come on in here. Come on in here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I got some. I got some pew folk in here right now. I got some pew folk in. Pew, pew. That's that level of poverty you so poor you can't afford to pee in the O. You pew. <laughs> pew, folk, pew folk understand what it's like to have your stuff shut off. 
you folk know what it's like to have a vehicle that depending on how the weather is, you determine whether you can leave the house or not. Y'all not feeling it. Some of y'all are too blessed, amen, somebody. See, because I had a vehicle that if it rained, you had to stay home because there was a crack in the distributor cap, and if the distributor cap got wet, it would stop the car. Amen, somebody. So I couldn't go no place. But listen, God blessed me in the midst of my mess when we didn't have what we wanted because it was then that I went through and I learned to appreciate, oh, God done blessed me with a few things now, but I won't lose my mind now because I know what it was when we went through then. And I can go back then just like I am right now and be just as happy and content. Can, can I, look, can I just, just before you let me go back to the text, let, let, me, let me just do, to my seasoned saints, I, I, I'm, let me be careful, because I don't want them, it's, it's two hours and some change drag back, and <laughs> Sister Sims and I don't want to have to go up running up, uh, up the expressway, <laughs> yeah, amen, somebody, I, let, let, let me help you with something. When folk are where they are, Appreciate where they are. You ain't never been with folk when they sharing their hard luck stories. I was in a class of Christians. You call them Christians. And as we were in the class and everybody was sharing their hard luck story, I shared mine. I, and I said, well, I... I can remember a time when Renee and I were struggling to the degree that I pop a little popcorn, put a little butter on it, and drink a glass of Kool-Aid, and I was feeling all right. That's right. That's it. They looked at me and said, Randy, that ain't nothing. And then they began to tell me how their hard luck stories outweighed my hard luck story. Can I, can I just help you like this? Yeah. It was important to me. Yes. Yes. Right. They said, Randy, you could have went over there to your mama's house. No, I couldn't. I was married with five babies. It wasn't my parents' responsibility to take Amen. care of us. Amen. I couldn't go running home every time something happened, every time something didn't work, every time something didn't come to pass, every time I had a bill that I couldn't pay. Amen, somebody. Amen. We, had, we had an occasion. Renee sat in the dark because the power was turned down. She played with the kids three or four days before the kids finally said, wait a minute. <laughs> All I'm, all I'm trying to get you to see right now is wherever you are and whatever you've been through, that's important to you. And be careful that you don't dismiss that. Because folks, I'm sorry, I'll come back to the text. I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the text. Listen, 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 listen. I, I want y'all to see this. My goal is to be clear, concise, and easily understood. Children, God's word, and parents. Provide for one's own, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse number 8. Okay. The soul's value verse stuff, Matthew chapter 16, verse number 26. Y'all probably all know, already know what the text reads. But just in case you missed it, for what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his own soul? Listen. When you've got your soul taken care of, you've got everything that really matters. Because by the time that you leave here, you ain't taking nothing with you. Nothing with you, nothing goes but your soul. And I believe I heard the Revelation writer say, Blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. He says, for they do rest from their labors. Watch it now, watch it, watch it, watch it. And their works do follow them. All right, let me turn because y'all y'all might not like y'all might not like this. Y'all might like like this. Why would you expect a check if you ain't did no work? I'm just trying to get you ready for. It. I'm just trying to get you to a place and a position in the situation and the circumstance where you're gonna do the best you can in terms of your soul salvation. All of us got to leave here, and it don't make no difference how old, it don't make no difference how young, amen, somebody. We got young folk leaving just like we do have some more seasoned folk. But ultimately, when you consider children, God's word, and parents, provide for one's own family. The soul's value verse stuff. And God's priority taught must be seen in adult lives. Now I want you to know something. God is to be the object of our total devotion. 
Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse number 5. Listen to how Moses expresses the point. He says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Touch a neighbor and tell him, that's everything in me. Listen, that's how important God wants to be in your life. Before anything else, as a matter of fact, I believe I heard the Bible say, except a man hate mother and father. Hate in the text, can I just bless you a little bit right here? Hate in the text means to love less. What is God saying? As a matter of fact, God is saying, I want to be such a priority in your life that you love less your mother or your father. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I didn't, I didn't get too much amen to me. Amen. Some of y'all struggling, man. You don't know. That's my mama. My mama gave me birth. Man, there's coming a time the Bible says that every knee go bow and every tongue go. And mama can't do nothing. Daddy can't do nothing. Only thing that you're going to have before you is a God. Paul said it's going to judge the quick and the dead. Listen. Get yourself together. Don't let quick people quick get bamboozling you. Getting us all messed up on heading in the wrong direction. Priorities are all messed up in such a way. And then God says, well, okay, let, let me come back. Children, God's word, and parents, provide for at least your own. The soul's value versus stuff. There is no value in stuff. God's priority talk must be seen in adults' lives, and God is subject or his object is the object of our total devotion. Mm -hmm. Hearts need to be saturated. That's really what Moses is saying in Deuteronomy chapter 6 at verse number 6. Mm -hmm. And if I really had to tell you right now before I take my seat, I would suggest I'm talking about matters of the heart. Come on. I ain't talking about that blood pump. Oftentimes when the Bible uses the term heart, He's speaking to the seat of understanding. Come on, on, brother Coffee, help me. Help me take my seat. Uh, Would you go over to Romans chapter 10 and uh, let's look together at verse number one and verse number two. Touch your neighbor and tell him he's about to bless me right now. I know, I know, I know, I know all of y'all didn't come in here not to get your blessing. Just one more time. Touch your neighbor and tell him he's about to bless me right now. Listen, 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 listen. Somebody said, perhaps it's my own understanding, and that is quite simply this, if you're taking notes, make note. That outline, that PowerPoint presentation, more than willing to share that with you, (laughs) my sermon outline, all of that, willing to do that. Somebody said this, and I believe it to be true. Listen, listen, listen. If you always do what you've always done, then you always get what you always got. You can't keep doing what you've been doing if it's not working for you like you want it to. You're going to have to do something different. Now maybe before you have a change of heart that leads to a change in your action, oh, by the way, that's the definition of repentance. Mm -hmm. Let me help you with this text. It's got to be book, chapter, and verse. Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse number 1, would you brought coffee? Brethren, read. My heart's desire Uh and prayer to God for Israel is what? is that they may be saved. Read what the Bible says, sir. For I bear them witness. I bear them witness what? That they have the zeal for God. Hold on. Touch your neighbor and tell them, fight up. Fight up. And don't know why. And don't, don't know why. You got some folk that are more dedicated to God and they ain't doing nothing in accordance to truth. Yeah. More faithful will be here more than some of us. Well, and really ain't got a clue why they're doing what they're doing. <laughs> Can I bless you right now? Amen. Now, 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 he says, my prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. Paul is concerned about his Jewish brethren. And he says, hey, I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but what? Not according, Not according to knowledge. knowledge. Fired up and don't know why. They being what? For they being ignorant, ignorant of God's righteousness. Listen, listen. The next time somebody call you ignorant, instead of you getting ready to fight. <laughs> I know when I was a kid, you'd have called us ignorant. We'd ready to throw down a bit somebody. Just means you don't know. They've been ignorant of the righteousness of God. What? Seeking to establish their own righteousness. Now, now listen, 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 listen. Learned this in my psychology class when I was in school, and that was this. My instructor said, you know what? When folk don't know what to do, they usually will make up. Yeah. 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 
when folk don't know what God's word says. Yes. All right, come on, come on. Let me help some folk. Let me help some folk. Some of us got some friends that ain't members of the Lord's church, and yes. they're doing some strange things. This is dedicated and devoted to it. Listen, listen, quit, quit being so critical of, because the Bible says, if memory serves me properly, Paul makes the statement to the church of Corinth that the carnal mind cannot discern spiritual things. See, until you get place, uh, people in a place where they can get some word in them, amen, somebody, uh -huh. Quit doing what you're doing. Amen, somebody. It's just making matters worse. you got to get me to a place that I'm at least willing to consider that which the Hebrew writer says is proper. Yes, sir. Sharper than any two edged sword. How sharp is that? You ever had somebody tell you something and you, you, you disagreed with it? But the more you thought about it, the more it messed with you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know I'm, I'm in the church of Christ right now. I, I know some of y'all got, uh, somebody yeah. told you something and you said, uh, I ain't feeling that. I don't believe that. <laughs> but the more you thought about it, <laughs> the more it messed with you. You ever had something that was so true, so strong, that when you laid down at night, that thing just had you tossing it, and you didn't, couldn't even get a good night. I, you got up the next day. Listen, when, what did you mean when you said to me what you said to me? Paul says in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, for it is the power of God unto salvation. I ain't forgot where I was at. Brother Coffee helping me in Romans chapter 10, verse number 1, and we moving on down there to verse number 2 right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm trying to help you to see that if you've always done what you always do, then you always get what you always got. There's a way to get a better situation if you want what's better. Yeah. How many of y'all want something better than what you're getting right now? Hey, Amen, somebody. Somebody said a sign of insanity is to keep doing what you're doing and they still expect a different kind of result. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Mm -hmm. I bear them record they have a zeal of God, but not according mm -hmm. to knowledge. They, being ignorant of the righteousness of God, have gone about to establish their own righteousness. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Amen. And have not submitted them so, submitted to the righteousness of God. Mm. So Paul says, be not conformed to this word. Yes, yes sir. Yes. Now, let me bless you. I'm taking my seat. Conform. Conform means to, to, to be shaped by. Mm -hmm. That's it. No, 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 they didn't, they didn't say amen too loud over there. They, I, I, they might not be feeling me like that. I'm trying, I'm trying to bless you. 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 Listen, 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 listen. Paul says, be not conformed. Don't let the world shape the way you think. Come on. Hey. Baby, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl. Somebody ought to have told you the value that you really are. Quit listening to that little broke down pistol starter. Amen, somebody. Y'all know I ain't made no mistake. It's some of them showed up in my house. Amen, somebody. Yeah, he wasn't coming in my house. Not that day. I, I put too much time in. Amen, somebody. I know everybody think their kids is nice, but I think I got some good looking, intelligent kids. Amen, somebody. That their mom and daddy done invested in. And little pistol starter and them ain't coming over taking her. Oh, little pistol starter ain't been by your house lately? Listen, 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 listen. If you mess around and let the world tell you how to think and what you ought to think and what you ought to be. I, I watched when I was growing up, my, my family had my family had a seafood restaurant in my hometown and, and, and we hired waitresses quite frequently. And as an African American business in my hometown, that was a good opportunity for a lot of young ladies. Yeah. I'd see the cute little girls, waitresses were nice looking, and uh, neighborhood drug deal came through. I'm just trying to bless you, trying to get your attention. Amen. So what he did, he came through and he left Brother Coffee a hundred dollar tip on the table. That was just his tip. He paid the bill, mm -hmm. but the tip was a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Which is just as cute as she wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But it was enough to get her attention. Mm -hmm. So you know what happened the next time. Next time he come in, he gonna say a little something to me. Yeah. Cause she gonna remember the idea. He left me. Left me. I told my wife then, I said, listen, her mom and daddy should have been teaching her you more than worth a hundred dollars. Oh, I don't. Uh oh, uh oh. Some of the, some of the fellas did not busted some of the fellas' game. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. I'm I'm sorry, Doc. You're gonna have to try another approach now. You're gonna have to try another approach. I'm just playing. He got the little girl start dating her. She, 
ultimately end up having a baby. He ended up killing a man. And I was sitting with her one evening at the table, and I could tell she was messed up when she got off the phone and she sat down and she said, he just shot somebody. That boy put her through a whole lot of stuff. Matter of fact, somebody told me this month is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to be talking to your daughters. We need to be talking to our sons. Y'all gonna let me be real this week? I remember, and I've said this, Fisk knows it, my wife knows it. I said to folk, I ain't forgot where I was at. I was over in Romans 10. Bro, coffee finished that. We over in Romans 12 now. I'm just quoting from Romans 12. I ain't forgot where I'm at. I'm getting ready to close. But I need you to get this before I take my seat. Amen. I've all times told folk, when you choose your mate, yes. you very well may be deciding your eternal fate. Come on, yeah. Since we're talking, can I go ahead and get this out before I go? There's a young lady I dated before I married my wife. If I had married her, I'd be doing time right now. Y'all got this stuff, and you telling these boys, that boy, and you know all men are dogs? Sis, if the men are dogs, unless he... Who are we dealing with? I'm I'm just saying. (laughs) Amen, somebody. Put something in them now. Girl said to me, I'm a young preacher. Started preaching when I'm 17, 18 years old. Girl was cute. She was thick. I hope y'all can handle that. Huh? But I figured it's just us. So I figured we could go on and talk like, like we really need to talk. Amen, somebody. You, you, you understand what I'm saying right now. Amen, somebody. I'm a teenage boy. Amen, somebody. She was thick. Amen. I'm, I'm trying to be the preacher I'm supposed to be. I'm, 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 I'm taking her, where I'm getting ready to take her home. We, we've, been, we've been someplace, we didn't got some burgers or whatever, just spent a little time together. And uh, I guess I was too slow for her. Well. And, and so she looked at me and, and said, uh, so what you gonna do with all of this? No, no. She wasn't talking about the burgers. Amen, somebody. She wasn't. She wasn't talking about the burgers. Uh uh-uh. uh. Uh-uh. She wasn't talking about the burgers. Come on, come on, come on. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. She, she said, she said, she said, you do like girls, don't you? You. See, fellas already know where I'm going with this. Fellas already know that. You done challenged my manhood. What you mean? Amen, somebody. Oh, ain't God good? Amen, somebody. When God didn't let me jump the broom with that one. Mm, 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 mm. Mama. Daddy. I'm saying the same thing to you that Moses was saying to them then. Teach your children. And to my young folk in here, don't feel feel some kind of way. I've been through some stuff that I don't ever want you to know about. Let me stop. 
If I, if I said to you right now that I, I should have been dead years ago, my parents, my parents still live in my hometown. One night we had a flood in the basement. Water was coming up, backing up through the sewer and through the toilet in the basement. Can I tell you how good God is before I take my seat? I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> my mama woke me up and she said, Trub. She calls me, oh, remind me to tell you why my mama called me Trouble before I leave this week. She calls me Trub for short. She said, Trub, there's, there's something wrong in the basement, and I need you to get up and check it out. I said, okay. I got up and I went downstairs and as I got down to that bottom two or three steps, water had already risen to that level. Y'all ever heard that expression, God takes care of fools and babies? Watch this. That's why I preach the way that I preach. Because I owe God an awful lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sir. That water was up to that about that third stair. I stepped down into the water, walked on down in my parents' basement, and had to pull up my pant leg because the water was that high. Yeah. Listen to me now. I'm telling you, God, be looking out for me sometime. I looked over and saw my parents' deep freezer. Oh. And something said to me, it's still plugged in. It's still plugged in. No, you didn't mess with that. Didn't have to mess with it. Amen. Watch this. Amen. I went over to the deep freezer. I looked at the plug. My father had put a piece on that goes over the plug to ensure that the cord does not accidentally get pulled out. It was a screw. Screwed into it. So it would stay. You know what I did? I went and got a screwdriver. <laughs> Standing in three feet of water, unscrewing my parents' deep freezer that was still on, and I unplugged. I walked away from the deep freezer. I walked back upstairs, walked back into my bedroom, got in my bed, laid down, and went to sleep. It wasn't until the next day that I said, fool. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. sir. I owe God too much. Yeah. Not to tell folks some truth. Yeah. All this week, mm -hmm. if you let me talk to me, talk to you like I talk, we're going to have a good time. Amen. Amen. I don't need you to miss the word, though. Because just like Moses said to them then, we still need to be saying to us now. Yeah. We ought to have a real concern about our families. I did eight years as a chaplain for the Fort Wayne Police Department. I need to talk with you before the week is over. Right now, for the benefit of those of us that are here in this experience, I need to extend the invitation. Sometimes we're dealing with things, we're going through stuff. Some of us are living with folk we ain't supposed to be living with. And Rascal was sorry when you got hold to him. And he ain't got no better since you had him. You might find yourself in a situation that you need God to help you get out of. Maybe you understand what that pew thing is like. You know, when you're trying to pay more bills than you actually have income. 
I tried to share with Fisk recently, some research suggested if you live in the state of Florida, you really need to be making at least $70,000 a year to buy a house, be paying a note, and taking care of all your bills. I'm thinking more than likely, it might be a few people in here that might not be making $70,000 a year. Do I need to talk to you about a time, a year, two years, three years, that we paid more bills than we had income? You can't tell me God ain't good. All I'm trying to get you to see is the very one I'm talking to you about now <laughs> is the very one you need right now. Yeah. You laughed at me. You, I know you laughed at me when I said I stepped down that three feet of water. But you got your story too. Yeah. You know that time when you think about it and you said, man, I should have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. God been good to you. God been too good to you not to, for you to be good to him. You may need to come and solicit prayers from the saints. I believe I heard James say in James chapter 5 at verse number 16, confess your faults one to another. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. pray one for another. Pray one for me. I'm not going to ask you what you did. But I certainly don't want you to leave here if you're struggling when you came in. Yeah. Some of us are smooth with it too. Yeah. We'll be fussing, fighting, put our hands on the door. Shut up, shut up. You know we got to go in here. Shut up, we got to go in and praise. When you go back out, it's just like you put it on the tree, so when you come back out, you pick it back up. That's a mess to be dealing with. Yes. You may need some prayer right now. For those of you that are not members of the body of Christ, remember it was Moses talking to the Israelites, God's people. God has a people today. Christians, Amen. Acts chapter 11 and verse number 26. Yeah. 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 Children of God, Galatians chapter 3, verse 26 and verse number 27. They are those folk that have been added to that body by Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47. Yeah. Yeah. They are those who have put Christ on in baptism, mm -hmm. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38, Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16. They are those that have been saved, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 21. They are those that have been born again, John chapter 3. How many of y'all passed kindergarten? Some of y'all scared. Some of y'all scared. It's a trick. Don't fall for it. It's a trick. I'm not tricking you. I'm not tricking you. Did you pass kindergarten? Did you pass kindergarten? If you pass kindergarten, you probably can pass this test. Here's the test. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? The last time I checked, 38 come before 47. Yeah. Some of y'all still scared. They're like, no, I ain't falling for it. He, he going to trick us. He going to trick us. I ain't trying to trick you. 38 comes before 47. True or false? All right. Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Acts chapter 2, and verse number 47. Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. When did God add folk to the church? After they were baptized for the remission of their sins. You passed kindergarten. You can figure that one out. That's why I like how Mark says in Mark chapter 16, verse number 15 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's why I'm trying to preach the word. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17, Paul says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. But then here's the thing, God wants you to believe it. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6, the Bible said, but without faith. faith it's, impossible. it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must well, believe that he is and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So you hear the gospel then you've got an option. I can't make you. I can't force you. But I sure enough plead God you will. Be willing to confess that Jesus is the Christ, son of the living God. Yes, sir. The Lord said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 32 and 33. To repent, that's that change of heart that leads to a change of action. Acts 17, 30, the Bible says, the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. What do you mean he winked? There was a time that God overlooked some stuff. But God said, I ain't overlooking nothing now. You better change. 
Luke 13, 3, Luke 13, 5. I tell you, nay, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. God is saying, except you change, you're going to lose your soul. Be willing to be baptized. Live faithfully until death. If you come back, I'll help you with that Revelations 2, 10. I know what we say about it, but I want you to see the power of it. And I'll share that with you if you let me. Amen. Right now, you need prayer. You need make statement. You need to be baptized. You need to be saved. That's right. You can come right now as together we stand and together we sing.